Good evening, everyone. There we go. Yay, we did it. I did it. Hello, welcome to Libby Says. I am your host, Olivia. Libby, um, so good to be back here. You know, we've had a little bit of technical difficulties that have um, made it hard for me to be able to broadcast live or live stream, however you want to name it. But I'm back and I'm excited. So um, give me a few moments as I learn a few things because I'm using a new, um, oh, bam, look at there. I got a ticker and everything. This is really sweet. Um, I'm learning a new platform tonight. So bear with me just a smidge while we work through my own personal little awkwardness of the things. But we're back. I'm excited. Um, and I'm just so thankful that you guys are here and joining me yet again for um, another show. So as you know, we have from weekly to bi-weekly. It felt better for me and I feel like it will be better for the humans that I know want to support me. So I'm pretty excited um, about that as well. And just to keep doing this work and sharing my crazy, whimsical wisdom <laughs> with the world. I think I'm entertaining sometimes. I think my friends think I'm entertaining. I hope the rest of y'all think I'm entertaining. So tonight we are going to talk about mindfulness. Um, this is something that is near and dear to me because of the fact that I have used mindfulness practices for a Longer than I can really count, but intentionally in my mind, knowing so for about six or seven years. And they really help to frame how I look at the world, how I manage my stress, how I um, regulate my emotions, how I interact with other people, and how I have do many of the things that I love to do so, so much. So hopefully I will have some information that you will find interesting and useful this evening. Um, mindfulness has kind of been a buzzword. It's been very, become very popular, especially this past year with the COVID-19 pandemic. But even before that, um, mindfulness was starting to to create a buzz. We were getting traction with it in so many different places, especially the education system and within the prison system, within um, mental health care as well. So people started to realize the importance, the impact of mindfulness and have been spreading the word. So I'm not even mad that it's popular, but and I don't, I don't really, I don't have any space to judge anyone on anything, especially when they may or may not have come into their work and walk of mindfulness. So with that being said, I'm not judge anyone or say, oh, I can't believe you just started this or you're just thinking of it. But I do encourage folks who have tried mindfulness and who have come into the practices to continue it beyond this pandemic. I believe that the pandemic taught us a lot of things, but it also taught us how to pause and be still and grounded and very present in the current moment. And that's all mindfulness is. Um, and how you do that, how you arrive there is your own personal choice. I mean, I could end the show right here, right now and go, boom, that's what mindfulness is. Whatever you want to do, however you want to find peace and be present, that's your mindfulness practice. But I'm not going to stop there. I have so much to say about it. And so I want to be able to share my ideas, some practices and some tangible ways of bringing mindfulness into your life, as well as some resources. Of course, my teacher self has a stack over here of things that I want to share with everybody. So I'm going to do that tonight. So what in the world is mindfulness? It's about being present in the current moment. So right now I'm sitting here at my cute little desk in my front room 
live streaming and I'm fully present in this moment. Oftentimes we have the idea that um, we should <laughs> I love <laughs> listen, I love technology and I hate technology sometimes. Um, so there's that understanding. There's a nice little typo in my banner. Go figure that. It's my life. I was rushing when I did it. And I'm afraid if I back out of here, I won't be able to fix it. So that being said, we're going to acknowledge that I have a typo. And so tis my life. Anywho. <laughs> um, and that's the fun part of like trying to engage in the chat. Like you got to stop and read. But this is no different from me teaching this whole past year online, um, trying to engage with my students. And then I've got 10 of them trying to send me private messages it's okay. I hope that we're okay with moments like that in our world. So here they be. Um, but mindfulness is about being present. And many of us have been conditioned to multitask and try to do several things all at once. And I think of a juggler, right? They can juggle all of those balls at once. But at some point, a focus is lost and or could be lost or you're focusing on one ball more than the other and you may lose the juggle right and you drop all the things and I'm not saying that you can never ever multitask because you can and sometimes it's necessary like sometimes I drive and listen to a podcast I want to listen to the podcast I have to drive that's technically multitasking. Sometimes I watch TV and enter grades. That's multitasking. But within those moments, there are some times where we need to be present. So if I'm watching TV, entering grades, but my mind is wandering off to what I may or may not have done well during my work day, it's taking me from the present moment. So it's not always just about not multitasking, but drawing in our attention to the moment right here, right, right now, um, and whatever we're doing in this moment. So with that being said, that's what mindfulness is. And sometimes it's hard for us to do that. So because it's hard for us to come present in the current moment, we have to do these practices, these things to help us be present. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. We all have things that we need to work on. But even if you find it easy to like pay attention in the moment. So if I'm sitting in a staff meeting and my mind drifts and wanders, I don't have too much of a hard time getting my brain back to focus. But these acts of mindfulness that we're going to talk about have so many other benefits besides focus. So they can help us to relieve stress. Um, it improves focus. It can help to ease the body of pain. There have been multitudes of studies that show that people who practice mindfulness have a diminished um, pain within their body. And whether that's from a specific ailment that they been working with or just overall. Um, it definitely helps to manage anxiety, depression, and PTSD. There is one of the resources that I'm going to share with you has an amazing article specifically on how mindfulness has been a beautiful benefit to those who suffer from PTSD, especially those who are in or retired from the military. It definitely helps to boost the mood. I know that every single time we do a mindfulness practice in my classroom, my students' attitudes change like that. Like, it's the miracle drug for teachers. <laughs> and so when I hear teachers, like, resistant to wanting to bring mindfulness in their classroom, 
I'm like, man, you don't know what you're missing. It's almost like dropping off candy. I don't know too many kids that don't want candy, fruit, um, which pretty much are candy. But when you incorporate mindfulness practices in the classroom, their energy shifts and it definitely helps with their focus. And when they're focused, they're able to um, perform well in class. And when they're able to perform well, that increases their confidence and their output and their engagement. All of the things that come from it that teachers really hope to see in their students. So, you know, get you some mindfulness, teachers. Bring it to your classroom. It helps to increase compassion. Um, You'll find when you have this space to settle, to ground, to focus in the present moment, and you have all these things that are... um, blossoming from your mindfulness practice so when you have less stress your body feels good you have a you have a good positive attitude you're more likely to be more compassionate more understanding more loving and more caring to other people so it's um a, also like not only does that feel good for yourself to have all those benefits blossoming in your life but it feels amazing to be able to be compassionate and kind and understanding to other people so some different ways oh my goodness there's so many ways so so many ways to bring mindfulness into your life which um i think like i could just this list list all of them sorry guys i'm checking the chat to make sure i'm not missing any words or communication from y'all so um my bad once again one in this new platform but we got it we're gonna make it work um some different ways that you can practice mindfulness um there's like i said there's so many um and many of them are yoga centered so it's the chicken before the egg thing everyone asks me is yoga mindfulness or is mindfulness yoga and i'm like Yes, and yes, <laughs> and I don't, I mean, which came first, who knows? I'm not really sure how many of us care either, but it's always a thing. Like we yogis sometimes sit around and pontificate and try to figure out like, I wonder which one was it? And we can never come up with an answer and we laugh at each other when we're finished. So here are some different ways to practice mindfulness. We have breath work known as pranayama within yoga. And so that could include anything from as simple as pausing and taking a deep round of breath. And a round of breath is an inhale and an exhale. It can be a very systematic form of breathing. It can be... Um, just watching your breath and if you've ever taken a yoga class or if you've listened to a yoga class or a meditation class you'll hear them say now let's take some time to watch our breath and I'm the first time I heard that I was like what do they mean how the fuck am I gonna watch my breath like where is it like how do I see it <laughs> and what <laughs> we mean when we say that it still makes me good when I say it to my students um, it just simply means pay attention to your breath just sitting and paying attention to the inhale and the exhale. And when you're watching your breath, you don't have to change your breath. Watching your breath just means you're letting it do what it's naturally doing, but you're attentive to it. And in that watching, you can change your awareness of certain aspects. So you can notice the rhythm of the breath, noticing how long the inhale is, how long your exhale is. And so in doing that, you would just count how many seconds you're breathing in and how many you're breathing out. And you'll notice the rhythm and then you'll notice like, this is my normal rhythm of breath. And the next step to that is, do I wanna slow this down? Because we know that when we slow down the breath, that it helps us to feel calmer. 
So depending on your situation, after you've watched your breath, you can leave it where it is or you could slow it down. Um, I know a lot of breath practices because I am a certified pranayama teacher as well. Um, and one of, I have a, I have several that are my favorites, excuse me. And, but one of my big faves, especially with students is what's called roller coaster breath. And, um, my older ones were very resistant at first because they're like, this is stupid. I don't want to do this, but it's easy. So you just take your hand and you're going to trace the hand, right? And you start just tracing. Now, trace that breath with your inhale and your exhale. As you go up, you're breathing in. When you exhale, you go down. Breathing in. And the key is to stay with the rhythm of your own breath. And because I'm talking and doing this, it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to really know where my inhale and exhale is. But if you're just listening to me, you're able to do that. So that's a simple practice that can be done um, anywhere, everywhere. Like I said, you can do a simple inhale and exhale. You can watch the breath. You can slow down the inhale and the exhale. One of my favorites to do that um, is far more discreet is a slight sustained breath. So you take a nice deep breath in. And then at the top, you find a gentle pause. Like there's a little space in there. Create a little space at the top. Exhale, slowly let the breath all the way out. And as you let that breath out, you find a gentle pause at the bottom. And once the breath is all the way gone, like completely gone, then the inhale begins again. So it's breathing in nice and deep. Pause at the top. Exhale, slowly let the breath go. And don't begin your next inhale until you've completely let that breath go. I love it. It's so much fun. Um, if you start to feel lightheaded when you're doing any breath practice, you need to return back to your natural breath. And sometimes when you sustain the breath, or some people like to say hold the breath, you will find that you might get a little bit lightheaded. That's normal. It's not okay. So that means adjust. Go back to your natural breath. Okay. One thing like I feel so bad sometimes. I'm like, I hope students know they're supposed to take care of themselves. As much as I say it, I find that sometimes students don't pay attention and um and do that. They just want to listen to the teacher and do whatever the teacher says, which is nice in some respect, I suppose. But if you're not feeling well and for whatever reason, any of the practices, you should go back to your natural breath. All right, another example or type of mindfulness practice is meditation. I usually don't say this one first, but we're all grownups. You're not going to freak out. But kids hear meditation and flip. Like, they lose their shit. Like, what do you mean? I'm not sitting still and quiet. Okay, you don't have to, I suppose. But meditation is so many things, and I'm going to do a class on meditation, or I shouldn't say class, <laughs> a show on meditation, so I'm not going to dig too far deep into it. But meditation can be as long as you want or need it to be. I always encourage beginners to start small. One minute. One minute. Sit still and quiet for one minute. Now, here's the thing. Thoughts are going to come to your brain. Like they're going to pop up. It is normal. It is natural. So you trying to find a way like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I was thinking stuff. I failed. Never mind. I'm never doing this again. It's normal. It's natural. Like right now, thoughts are popping in my brain. Okay. I come right back to what I'm doing. And that's all you do. So I always encourage people just sit quiet for one minute. Try that for a week. Add two more minutes to it. And before you know it, 
you're sitting in stillness and quiet for 20, maybe 30 minutes, maybe even more. You never know. And that's okay. And if you need to fall back because it was too much, it was too intense, the longer periods of time, that's all right too. And there's different types of meditation. There's stillness, there's guided meditation, there's intention setting meditation, there's candle gazing, so many different things. And once again, I'm not going to get into all of that this evening. I'll do a show about that. um, Probably my next show this month. But meditation is a great way to start your day, to end your day. You can slide it in in the middle of the day. Um, You know, you can get real sneaky with it. (laughs) Like before you go to bed, just lie in the bed still doing nothing for a minute. That's meditation. Take it for what it's worth. You should try it tonight. Um, Movement is mindfulness. So I'm sure people are like, oh, you mean yoga? Well, that's movement. So yes, so it can be, but it doesn't have to be. It could be running. It could be walking. It could be cycling. It could be working out at the gym. It could be doing calisthenics in your your home. But that rhythmic activity brings a sense of calm to the body and it's pretty difficult for your brain to wander into other spaces while you're doing some of these activities. I mean, they will because it's normal and natural, but if you get back into the flow of that run, I used to run and I can remember starting out thinking a million things. And within, I don't know, three to five minutes, all I'm feeling and hearing and sensing into you is the rhythm of my run. I I can hear it in my ears right now. Um, Cycling is the same. Like you get into that rhythm and you begin to get into this space of focus and um, calm that just feels so amazing. And you're able to to stay in that groove. Um, I love it. Dang it, I miss running. Like these knees, you can't do that shit no more. Literally, my doctor told me I had to choose dance or running. And I was like, oh, that's easy. <laughs> I walk for fun. I cycle, but I cannot run. And there are some days I just want to get to it. And I'm like, girl, please. You'll be mad. You'll be mad. So movement is essential. And how do you get movement in? You know, I cheat. I'm I'm, I'm telling you, like, mindfulness is easy for me because I'd be trying to find all the loopholes in and around it. Like, okay, I have to walk. I got to go to visit a teacher in um, upstairs. We have one elevator in my building, so it's not like, ooh, you can get on the elevator. But I walk there. If When I did work in a building that had a lot of stairs, I always walked. I did not get on the elevator. Partially because I'm claustrophobic, but also it's good for my health, and it's a nice little mindful activity. And so what do I do when I'm walking? I count the stairs. I say a mantra to myself. I start to pull all these things together, but helping the body to stay active on a regular basis is good for your health, good for your mind. Um, Probably why some people who practice mindfulness have less discomfort in their body because they're constantly moving and you can slide it in just about anywhere in your day. You just have to make the, the effort to do so. Um, Another is acts of kindness. This is my favorite. Um, Acts of kindness are just like it. There's something to be said about doing kind things for other people. So you can write a note. um, You can send a card, a letter, email, text message, DM, whatever you like. 
but send a person a special note or message to let them know how much you appreciate them or care for them. Um, you can send gifts, I suppose, to some things I like to do um, as a teacher is I love to drop notes and treats on students' desks, even my coworkers, and it just feels great. It just feels great. I don't know what else to say, but it just does. And um, there are so many different ways. I'm going to share some from one of my resources. So back in December, Yoga Journal um, put out a special edition of their magazine called The Power of Mindfulness. And they had this whole like series of suggestions on acts of kindness. And I'm going to share a couple. Yes. Cool. I feel like Oprah, you know, when she would do her book review or she'd have an author on her show and she, then she would read a section. I'm going to share a couple of these. So write your partner a top 10 list of things you love about them just because if you pass a car with an expired um, parking meter, put a couple of quarters in it. Or when you go through an auto tow booth, pay for the person behind you. Starbucks folks are really good about paying it backward. I've been in one of those chains several times and it's so much fun. Um, do you know someone who just moved, offered to help them unpack, not pack because unpacking is hell, um, then bring along a fun, a fun playlist or lunch. Let's see. One more. If you know someone who has lost a parent over the last year, reach out to them on Mother's Day or Father's Day to help get them through a tough time. So this this magazine is an amazing um, resource, but acts of kindness are very easy. You just have to be creative and willing to do it. Like you have to just be like, I know it feels weird when you start, but the joy that you provide the other person ends up coming back to you when you do it. So it doesn't hurt to go ahead and dip in with those. Another way to um, bring mindfulness into your life is to create things. Um, being creative triggers the brain in a certain way. Um, and that's a whole other show, but it can be anything and everything from coloring. It could be painting. It could be building things, creating music. It could be creating a business plan. But spend some time creating and even just sitting around imagining, right? That's creating things in your brain. Um, and of these, I don't know. I feel like I have to say that coloring or drawing or any time of like um, visual art would be the one that speaks to my heart the most because my mother is a visual artist and I just used to watch her draw and doodle all the time. So she, okay, so side note, fun fact, quick story. When I was a kid, um, back in the day, young girls were forced to wear pantyhose to church. Or anything, truthfully. Ugh. I hate pantyhose. Hate them. Like, ugh. I can feel the itchiness right now. But when my mother would get a fresh pack of pantyhose, she would, if you, so if you remember, on the, there are usually two pieces. You have the front flap that's like, the marketing piece but then inside excuse me is another rectangular piece of hard paper like cardstock it's not glossy but it's not matte but the pantyhose were wrapped over my mom would always like because I was impatient and I'd be like waiting on her to put on her pantyhose and do whatever to get ready to really leave for church and she'd give me the middle insert and she would tell me here, draw something. I remember the first time she did, I just stared at her like, what? She's like, draw something. And I was like, oh my God, always making me work. So <laughs> it became our thing. She'd get a new pack of pantyhose. I'd get a new drawing tablet. And 
I can even remember like being in my 20s at the house and she'd open a new pack of pantyhose and she still hands me the card like here you want this heck yeah I want that let me ride on this bad boy um but get a coloring book and it doesn't have to be a fancy adult one but it could be or you can get one from the dollar store and go to town because it's fun it's fun and most of the time it draws your brain away from negativity it draws your brain straight to the present moment i think it was right before state testing i offered coloring to my students in class and they were like i don't want that and i said okay well it's there if you do want it when you're finished with your work and a few of them picked him up like, I mean, I'll take it, but this is stupid. And I was like, that's fine. You don't have to. And I remember one student, he goes, do you have coloring pencils? I said, yes, I have p- coloring pencils. They're like, well, can I get like a blue and a red? I said, sure. And as he walked away from the box, he goes, I said, is that all you need? He was like, no, I, I like need all of the colors, but, you know, I don't want to take all of them. I was like, bro, there's 50 of each color. <laughs> Go for it. And the kids are like, wait, so you have coloring pencils? I said, yes. I said, what y'all think? Like, I was going to offer up coloring and I wasn't going to give anything to color with. And they were like, don't nobody else have coloring stuff? And I said, "Uh, yeah. And they were so happy. Like. Then I had kids asking, can I take an extra one with me? Can I give one to a friend? Of course you can. All of the above. Take the things. Do the stuff. Color and be merry. And they all were always so happy. I just would love to see it. Like, they'd be smiling, coloring, doodling, like turning their paper over, doodling on the back, and just enjoying life. So, color, kids. The next one This one digs a little bit deeper. So moving into discovering your life purpose. This is a longer journey and the shit is worth it. And once again, there's another show that we can come up on at a different time. But the beauty is it can be done. And when you do it, it helps to begin framing the rest of your life, the rest of your days, whenever you start it. Um, and it can be intentional for like whole life long, or it could be like, what is your purpose at work? What is your purpose in your home? What is your purpose in your community? What is your purpose within this particular organization or on this committee? Um, so how do we do that? You start journaling. You do a lot of self-reflection. And so you can be fancy. You can be simple. Get a notebook and start writing down your daily life and what you hope to become and, and build and create and nurture, right? Reflect on yourself and see where you actually are so that you can decide where you need to go. Within this, a practice, two practices that I do, the first being I write down a page of I am statements. And I make it hard for myself. So I get like those big, huge sketchbook size notebooks. And I think on one of those, and I'll split the page. I'm telling you, I'm making it rough. So it's about 50 statements. I write down 50 I am statements. And the trickery becomes not repeating something you've already written before. So you do have to be reflective and go back and say, I already said I was creative. Oh, innovative haha synonyms bring them in friends but this act is definitely grounding centering and helps you to focus 
but it helps you to really acknowledge who you are. And when you can look at a page and see all the positive attributes that you have, let's talk about the level of stress that's relieved. Let's talk about the confidence that we walk with. And when we are confident and we are have less stress in our lives, how our output and our engagement with the people around us just begins to improve. So the next layer to that is then I write a page of, once again, split in half. This one's small. This notebook I have is smaller. I write a page of the things that I will become and the things I will do. So it's like a book of affirmations um. yeah I don't want to say dreams because then bad boys are going to happen so um, that's a, a great way to find and hone in on your life purpose the last example is healthy eating oh I hope my friends didn't think we're going to come this far I wasn't going to talk about food Of course, we're going to talk about food. So before I get into talking about healthy eating, let me tell you one of the number one things you do when you're eating healthy is you freaking cheat. Cheat. Say it again. Cheat. I.e. still enjoy food and the things that you like. Now, unless a doctor tells you to stop eating it for a health related reason. Do it. Like yesterday, I had some freaking ice cream. That crap was good. It was so good. Like, I almost was mad I had a cone in the way. (laughs) It was so good. However, healthy eating doesn't always mean eliminating a lot of foods, right? Healthy eating, like you can still have potato chips and it be healthy. Just means you don't have to eat the whole bag. And when you eat the bag of potato chips, like, I mean, a little one. When you eat the chips... That doesn't mean shoveling shoveling it in your mouth. So when you begin a journey of healthy eating, some of these practices are the same as what I'm going to say in just a few moments about bringing mindfulness into your life. You start small. So um, I recently discovered that I have a fibroid in my uterus. It's six centimeters by seven centimeters. That bitch is big as fuck. And I'm getting ready to choke that bitch out. That is my (laughs) my phrase on her. I'm choking that bitch out. And I'm going to do that with healthy eating and lifestyle changes. So, um, but I'm starting small. So I've started small by, um, being certain that in the morning I start my day with a warm beverage because according to Ayurvedic practices, starting your day with a warm beverage helps to invigorate the digestive system so you can get rid of waste and toxins out of your digestive system and your body faster and it helps to cleanse your liver and colon. So every day, warm beverage. It probably shouldn't be coffee, but we're going to start with warm beverage. Over the past two weeks, my warm beverage has either been ginger, honey, water, or a tea with honey. Um, I'm diminishing the amount of meat that I eat. I already don't eat a lot of cheese, but I'm very mindful about my cheese intake. I'm going to sneeze. Um, But either way, I'm doing it in chunks, right? So I'm not like taking all of it on today. But hopefully over the next six months, I will only be eating meat once a week. I won't be drinking caffeine, but once a week, I hope to not be eating any cheese I hope to have switched to cage-free range eggs. I never thought how important it was until I learned how important (laughs) it was. Um, I already eat a lot of green leafy vegetables, but I need to eat more of them. Like 
daily. And it, and it's interesting because I'm kind of disappointed in myself because when I had been doing my research over the past two weeks or so, um, some of the suggestions are green leafy vegetables and eat a salad every day. And I used to eat a salad every day, but I stopped. And as much as I don't want to blame myself, I also need to admit that there were some things in my life that I slipped on and I got to get back to doing just as well as physical activity. Um, COVID has kept us out of the gym and it's been weird. So now that I can go back to the gym, I'm going to start working out again in the gym. Um, But either way, the whole point with healthy eating is you start small. So choose something and work on that for two weeks. If it's increasing water, if it's decreasing your portions of your food, if it's eliminating a specific type of food or adding in a food, do it for two weeks before you start adding in something else. And you may have the wherewithal to do two to three things at a time, and that's great. So go for it. Like if you can drink more water and eat a salad every day, go do it. But as much as possible, try not to do 10 things at once. And then what happens is, it's just like with working out, is that when you aren't successful or you miss a day, um, people start to regret the missing or the slip up and they feel defeated and they stop the work. So it's better to start small and slowly add to it so that you can feel more accomplished and it can be a longer standing practice in your life. Um, Another way to do this is like dedicate this shift to something. Like I said, I have a new fibroid and I'm choking that bitch out. That's what I'm dedicating this to. It's good health and choking a bitch out. I've never choked a bitch, but I'm going to choke this one out because she got to go. I ain't doing this because fibroids are painful. It feels like you have a fetus in your uterus and ain't no fetus in my uterus. Gotta go. Taking up space and time. Probably why I gained so much weight. Not really, but we'll blame it on her. Um, and then the other thing in this is like, this is leading into more of how do we do this? Ask what behavior you want to create. What is the behavior that you want to create? And let them be your guide. Oh. How, how, Olivia? Girl, let's, how in the world are we about to do this? How are we about to live in mindfulness? Well, I already said it once. You, we, us is going to start small. You start simple. I've given you several different practices, right? And ways to bring mindfulness into your life. Start small. Maybe like, maybe you want to do breath work and you want to move and you want to be creative, right? Okay. So tell yourself that you're going to pause and breathe every morning. And every night. Or maybe you do it at your lunch break. Or maybe you pause and breathe. Like think of adding it to something that you already do. So maybe you pause and breathe for a minute before you start watching your favorite TV show. I don't know. Um, I had this awful. <laughs> I can't believe I did this, but it worked. I had this awful, awful study practice when I was in college. I'd watch TV and on the study, on the commercial breaks, I would cram in reading so much or cram in like reviewing so much of my notes. 
my friends are like, what are you doing? I'm like, commercial's coming up. It's, I only got two minutes. So in these two minutes, I'm going to answer all these questions or blah, 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 blah. So I can still watch my TV show. <laughs> Weird. But most of us don't watch live TV. But if you do watch live TV with commercials, you could pause and breathe on the commercials. I don't know. Think about it. You can set timers. That's allowable as well. And so if you want to be creative, pick, once again, a day and a time. So, like, all of this is easy. Like, start simple and choose. So let me go back. Choose familiar practices. I mean, if you want to do yoga really bad and you've never done it before, that's fine. But it's easier to start your mindfulness journey with practices that are familiar to you. So if you want to, like, you already exercise, great. Just make sure you're consistent about it. Create that, create this practice for that. Create the space for that. If you already eat pretty healthy, cool. So what else can you do? I'll tell you, eat mindfully. Stop shoving the whole banana in your mouth. Take small bites. If your bite has to be larger than two fingers, if you have to open your mouth larger than two fingers, it's too large. When you get that food in your mouth, chew it up until it's mush. No swallowing chunks. And no double eating. What do you mean by double eating? No, you have a fork and a knife maybe. You eat, chew, 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 swallow, eat. No eat, and then you're waiting for the next bite. That's like shoveling. Enjoy the food that's in your mouth. Wait for it to go down before you then be your next bite. That's still eating healthy. And you have to make time for it. And you're going to say, how often? Look, I don't know. How often do you need it? How much stress do you have in your life? How much confusion is happening around you? How, how unfocused are you? Right? How, does, how bad does your body feel? Excuse me. That is going to determine how often. Some of these practices you can do every single day and it makes sense. But you don't have to. Like, I don't want people thinking like, oh my God, I have to color and breathe and meditate. And then I have to go walk a mile. And then I have to eat um, a, a salad. Like, you can do all of that in a day. I strongly believe that we can do hard things. We can. But. It takes time to build the muscle memory to make those things happen. So there's none of this like trying to force it in. Just like I talked about the eating practices. You don't need to try to own all of it at once. You can do that in small chunks. Um, but I do suggest that you schedule it and you put it on your calendar so you know at least you're going to be shown this is when you should be doing this. And eventually at some point, it just becomes normal and natural. So six or seven years ago, I started with this particular mantra or phrasing of rise, pray, read, meditate, be epic, repeat. My goal was to get up at five o'clock every morning to pray, to read the Bible, meditate on the words that I read. The be epic is get up and do the shits. And then I would start it all over the next day. I literally don't know when it was, I mean, I was raised in a church in a Christian family. So waking up and praying wasn't really hard. Like right away. But 
there was a time in there that I would kind of like, oh, shoot, I didn't pray this morning. And I felt really bad about it. Like, he gave me breath and life. How dare I not pray? I felt guilty. So I'm like, I need to fix that. So this mantra came about from that. And here we are six to seven years later. And literally, let me tell you what, between five and six o'clock every morning, no matter where I am, no matter what job I'm working, no matter what the heck I did the night before, my soul will wake up and me and God have a quick talk. (laughs) I may not get to the read, like sometimes depending, like I may fall back to sleep and then get to the reading and the meditating. But my day starts like that. Like, I can't even, because that's part of it, like, my body is used to it, my soul is used to it. So that first moment of alertness that I know that I'm alert and awake, I pray immediately. Like, I try, because I did it this morning, I tried to take my butt back to sleep, like, mm -hmm. (laughs) you a lie. (laughs) You better go ahead and pray and give thanks (laughs) and then go back to sleep. That's how that works. And that's how it worked today. And that's okay. Um, But, and so way back five, six, whatever, however many years ago, I had an alarm set. Get up and pray. And I knew the next steps after that. But I had to I had to create that. Like I had to create that schedule for myself. And now when I tell you it's just such a rhythm, I can't even. Like I had a rhythm of praying for my future goals and aspirations at noon every single day. So I'm still triggered by. So here in Columbus, the tornado alarms are tested every Wednesday at noon. And so when I hear those, I immediately think of the things that I want to do and be and start praying about it. It's weird, (laughs) but it's real. And that was usually coupled around my lunchtime. So when I'm eating lunch, no matter when that is, I have a tendency to pray for those things. And that came from time of repetition. Now it's just literally, I don't even want to say muscle memory, it's soul memory. It's like embedded into my soul and I love it. But that will come over time, but you have to create the space. You have to like make time for it, put it on a schedule, set alarms. People used to, I will talk about this forever. Like people like, you have to remind yourself to pray. Yeah, I do. Or I guess I could think of it is I have to remind myself to pause so I can pray. Yes, it beats like that. The next suggestion of how to bring mindfulness into your life is to tell your people. Tell your people. Whoever is important to you, whoever is your support system, whoever cares about you, tell them that you're making these shifts. Why? Accountability and support, right? And it's not, I mean, it depends on what level of accountability you want and you need. So I have a sorority sister who checks in with me about my business every couple of months just to make sure I'm on top of my stuff and I appreciate it. She does it in love. Um, And it's not about someone having to call and chastise you or see you and feel the need to chastise you. But if I'm trying to diminish my dairy intake and my friends know this and we've been out three days this week and I've had ice cream and we went to um, the grilled cheese spot melt and I've had lasagna for dinner and who knows what else. Oh, I'm eating chunks of cheese because I used to just, I love cheese. It's so good. Just eating chunks of cheese. At some point, I expect my friends to go. I thought we were choking this bitch out. We wasn't eating all that dairy. You're right. 
You're right. Let me go ahead and dial the hell back. That's why we tell our people, right? We tell them because we need the accountability and we need the support, such as encouragement. Like, you can do this. I'm proud of you. Girl, I see what you're doing. Dude, I can't believe that you've been able to take yoga class five times this week. That's awesome. Whatever the case may be, we need our people to know because it helps with our progress. And from there, you just build, right? You literally just build on it. You know, you know my process. Create a plan. Work the plan. Assess the plan. Repeat. And that assess is huge. Like, after you've tried it for a month, look at it, see if it's working. If it's not, then you have to make some adjustments. Create a new plan. All the way down. Right? That's how we do this. Um, you know, mindfulness for me is just my life. But in the beginning, I was really meticulous about how I brought it in to my life, right? I talked about setting alarms for when I would read and pray and meditate. Um, on my calendar, there were certain days that I did creative stuff. So whatever that creative day was, I get to choose Maybe I'm making a card. Maybe um, I'm coloring or drawing. (sighs) Maybe I'm building a table. I don't know. Heck if I know anymore. I do so much creative stuff. I believe everything is creative. So I had a day that was for that. I had a day or however many days for physical activity. Um, I even had a day for me and my dog. That day was just for me and my dog. I was responsible for all of his things on that day because that was our day. And I just focused on me and my dog time. I also had time to be out in nature and do what everyone thinks that yogis do, like hug trees. I'm not really a tree hugger, but I do pick up flowers and I smell them. I do talk to the birds. I do admire the ants marching. I'm going to listen to the brook. (laughs) It sounds goofy, but it's real. It's what I do. I'm okay with it. However, I made the time. Um, And it was my mainstays, like I said, were like my prayer, my meditation, my breathing. The other ones were like fillers during the week. But you can do what you want. And if all of that seems crazy and it feels like it's way too much, find a practice that works and do it once a day. Or do it once a week. But do it. So I hope that makes sense. I wonder if there's any questions. If you do have questions, drop them in the chat. So I've already talked about this resource um, from Yoga Journal love it it has like morning and evening asana practices it has 10 meditation practices that last for like maybe 10 or 15 minutes very easy to do um it has the acts of kindness log it has a plan for improving your eating i'm sure that you can purchase it online I'm, I don't think it's any longer in circulation. Um, the next two resources, I can't remember. I can't remember the name of the artist and entity. I bought these. So these are intention cards, which are not to be confused with tarot cards. Every time anyone sees a stack of cards with pictures and words these days, they assume they're tarot cards. And if you are into tarot, I don't give a shit love your life and do what you do but these are not tarot cards and i i am more agitated with the fact that people do that that they see cards and they see words and pictures like that's a tarot card and if it was but these aren't 
And that shows the ignorance of people who don't realize that there's tarot cards and there's intention cards. And these are intention cards. This is a local artist from here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and I purchased them at a local spa. And what they are is like, it's a simple word. And then there's this beautiful poetic phrasing explaining the word and um, what it looks or feels like. And so what I do with these is when I'm feeling sluggish and I'm feeling unmotivated or um, I want to trigger my meditation practice or work that I'm about to do, I pick a card. And some people, like, you can do whatever you want. You can do it blindly. You can look at the images and go, ooh, that one, because it's, like, I like those colors or I like that picture. Um, and then you'll hear people say this. And let me be really clear because it's true. Whichever one speaks to you. And I'm like, cards don't speak to you. We all have an energetic knowing. Some of us refuse to acknowledge it but we all have an energetic knowing, i.e. your freaking gut. And I don't mean like your gut where you put all the good food at. But we have an energetic knowing. So when we look at the cards, you'll know. The first one that went, ooh, that's the one. Or it might, like you might hear in your spirit or your brain, your heart, your gut, however you want to name it, they'll, it'll say, pick one that's red. So then you'll go through and you're like, ooh, it's red. There's red. I'll take that one. Or you'll hear them say in your spirit, pick the one right off the top. I'm not ready to talk about our spirit sense just yet, but I will be before the end of the year. And I get frustrated. I'm sorry. I'm take a, a moment of liberty here. When people... Um, get hung up on words and semantics and don't want to take in to account the true principles of what is being said. Um, and we usually find this happening amongst religious circles of folks who hear particular words and they're triggering for them. So then they try to find a way to debunk or dismantle what another person is saying or doing. And I'm not here for that crap by any means. So you got to do what speaks to you. Um, <clears throat> so this one is hard. So give me a second. I'm going to pick a card. And then I'll read it. So this one, ha, <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I get this one often. Burn is the word. And here is what she says. Observe fire. It holds power, yet is without fixed form. It is a paradox of comfort and danger, a source of light and producer of shadow. Become fire. Learn when to provide warmth and when to use your heat to repel that which loves the cold. Burn. Whoo, there's so much to be done right here. Um, this has embedded in for me like, personal reminders, affirmations, and convictions. So depending on where I'm at and what I'm doing with life, when I need these, I just pick one up, I choose it, and I then begin to work from there. Like if this were for me, like trying to do a yoga practice, this would be a sweaty, hot, heavy moving practice where you're burning away all the excess energy. But that's that's me and that's how I do that. <clears throat> and you can, excuse me, I'm sorry. You can pretty much get intention cards just about anywhere in the world these days. My next is um, the Radiant Sutras by uh, Dr. Loren Roach. I met him and his wife a couple of years ago. And this is a condensed version of the larger book that I have back here behind me. This is meant to throw in your pocketbook. Um, and this is, ugh, I don't have any 
I don't, I don't have an abbreviated way to describe it. Um, the Radiant Sutras is a series of passages that help guide people into meditative thought, um, exploring their inner understandings, knowings, um, exploration of the universe. And I, and I really mean like the universe. Like, have you ever fathomed how big the universe is and what the frick is going on and what that sounds and feels like? Oh, so sometimes these are just beautiful words that are peaceful to ponder on. Sometimes I open and I'm looking for something in particular. And this pocket one's a little harder to do that with because it doesn't have, like, none of them really do. But I know them pretty well where I can kind of work my way around it, kind of like I do the Bible. But um, sometimes they help with my meditation. They'll give me a phrase or a mantra or a word or a concept. So let's find one. This is my fave. Ah, ready, let's go. Strong or soft, wild or serene. Whether the breath flows, there is song. Hear it whisper, touching behind the face, singing in the throat, dancing spirals in the sanctuary of your heart. Talking about breath. Like, have you thought about how your breath like dances through your body? Because it goes everywhere, right? In this practice of listening. A moment may come where you just want to lie down. This is the doorway to surrender. I'm going to pause again because what I didn't mention earlier in meditation is meditation is also sleep. But <clears throat> fall into the wide open embrace of life. You are the instrument. Breath is playing. So think of a wind instrument. Like a flute. You're the instrument. Breath moves. You make the, mo the motion or the music. All the meditations you have ever loved are vibrating in this luxurious hum, continuing even in sleep and dreams. You don't stop breathing when you go to sleep, right? So you're still active. You're still a part of this whole universe. Continuing even in sleep and in dreams. This, the sleep part, is your school. Just you and infinity. The texture of the self is untamed freedom. I just love it. Love it. It just brings peace. And I mean, even from this, maybe I want to draw. Like maybe it brought imagery to my mind and now I want to draw. Or maybe it just brought imagery to my mind that's beautiful that I just want to sit and let dance in my eyes. That too, my friends, <clears throat> is mindfulness. This next one is a very specific one. Um, this is a book all about mindfulness practices for educators. So, of course, I've got to bring the educators something specific. It is called Onward, Cultivating Emotional Resilience in Educators. So it's rooted in social emotional learning and mindfulness practices are strongly embedded into SEL work. It's heavy, it's deep. I can't even begin to get into this. If I did a book club, this would be one of the books that we would utilize. However, there are many books on mindfulness geared toward certain types of careers or people. Now this last one, so much fun. So I told you I love art and creating. This is a doodling book. So this book shows you different ways to doodle. So like here oh I gotta go this way yep so you have the example on one side and then the other side of the page they tell you how to do it 
I could play with this forever in a day. But it's another way for me to create and to draw. Um, it's just so much fun. I impress my kids with it. I'm like, girl, I just learned this last night. <laughs> I'll be doing it on my board and stuff, and I'll be making up stuff. I'm like, oh my God, how did you do that? I'm like, uh, hold on, let me get the book. I'll tell you how. But these are just a few of my own personal resources um, that help me in my growth and mindfulness. Um, ooh, excuse me. It's that, um, what do you call it? My nervous belch. I literally do not belch this much on a regular basis. <laughs> and I know that it's um, my nerves. So we just acknowledge it. So because we're, I'm working with this new platform um, to live stream, I'm not able, I'm not, let me rephrase I knew it was going to take me more time to prepare all my visual things. So I don't want you to think that um, those things are going to be gone or we don't have the same show staples. And so at this point, we would normally do um, our M&Ms. And my M&Ms are over there, but I'm not eating candy. So ugh, it'll just stay over there. But we're doing M&Ms, memes and music. Um, <laughs> the, the best meme I saw this week, um, has to be, if we had an adult <laughs> spelling bee, it would humble a lot of us. And it made me pause, like, would I pass? Like, how far would I get in a spelling bee? Um, down spell check is a beautiful thing. I think I get pretty far. I do pretty well when I, I'm paying attention, but because I know how I have to crutch, um, I don't sometimes. So, yeah, I just thought it was funny. Plus, you know, it just proves what I'm, I'm saying like candidly about myself. Like sometimes I'm not paying attention in the moment what I'm doing and I'm just typing and I'm moving haphazardly because I know the computer is technically going to take care of me. But when I pause and I'm fully focused and in the moment, my spelling is pretty great. Even though it says midfulness on the screen. <laughs> I was so nervous. I don't like to start things late. So I was just like nervous and scattered when I started. Um, and I don't, because it's a new platform, I don't know how to go out and fix it without stopping the whole shit. Um, and for music, the song that I think would be amazing for us to listen to is Grounded by Ari Lennox. This is one of my faves. It's pretty short. Um, but the lyrics, the chorus is very significant and as is you will grow once you are grounded and mindfulness is all about being grounded there's the link to it it's on spotify it's on apple music it's on title as well um but i just, like I like the song because it's like light and whimsical and the chorus is just beautiful. You will grow once you're grounded. Once you're grounded, once you find your footing and you press your feet and your soul and your body into the foundations that you have, that's when we grow. And mindfulness helps us to get grounded. These practices are definitely meant for personal growth and empowerment. So I hope that this evening you feel strong enough and um, informed enough to begin some mindfulness work for yourself so that you can grow. 
I really appreciate you being with me, with us this evening. I do not take your presence lightly because literally you could have been anywhere in the world, but you were right here with me. And for this, I am sincerely grateful. I will always be grateful and humbled to those of you who stop in, whether it's live or afterwards. You're definitely appreciated. Please live in light, peace, and joy. Have a wonderful one evening, and I will see you back in two weeks. Same bad time, same bad.